Welcome back to Primetime News and a special welcome to our viewers once again on OneSpotMedia.com. New protocols for the reopening of the entertainment sector will take effect in the coming days. Prime Minister Andrew Holness outlined the protocols when he addressed the House of Representatives this afternoon. Now, Mr. Holness also outlined the easing of other COVID-19 restrictions come July 1. Vashon Brown now joins us live with the details. Vashon? Thank you so much, Janela. From a public health perspective, the Prime Minister says the country is not where it would like to be. The positivity rate is still above 5%. Only a small percentage of the population has been fully vaccinated and many new variants of concerns like the Delta variant. So with easing of restrictions, the Prime Minister acknowledges that there is a risk of infections and hospitalization could rise once more. With the reopening of the entertainment sector, a summer spike is possible which could impact the country's ability to reopen schools this September. So Mr. Holness says the protocols must be followed. The Prime Minister told Parliament that while key indicators are trending in the right direction, it's not the end of the country's fight with COVID-19. He says while the country is in a new phase, the COVID-19 containment measures cannot be abandoned totally. But the entertainment sector has taken a massive hit due to the restrictions. And so now, new protocols for the industry's reopening, which will take effect on July 1. The Prime Minister says events will be categorized as small or large and would have different protocols. Small events will have fewer than 100 people, including organizers and support personnel. These include round robins, outdoor concerts, outdoor parties and community events. The organizers of small events will be allowed to make applications for permits as they would normally do through their local authorities and will work with them to ensure that the protocols are in place for a safe event. The municipal corporations have agreed to reduce the cost of applying for permits and licenses by 50%. For small indoor events, Organizers cannot exceed 60% of the venue's capacity. As for large events, meaning events with more than 100 people, those organizers must first send an application to the Minister of Entertainment. The Minister will review the application to see that it meets the requirements. When the Ministry is satisfied, it will forward the application to the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM. ODPEM will then consult with the Minister of Health and other agencies. It's only after this process that approval will be granted. Large events would include stage shows. I, I, I don't want to encourage them, but I'm saying it includes stage shows, church conventions, conferences, crusades, festivals. You, you know those large events. The government will also allow large events to be held at some of its facilities rent-free. We will waive the normal rental cost and organizers would be required to cover only the operating costs such as utilities and security costs. These venues include the National Stadium, the Trelawney Stadium and the Rani Williams Entertainment Center. The government says it will not require vaccination or COVID-19 tests for people attending these events. But if private event organizers wish to include such requirements, they're free to do so. Madam Speaker, to signal the reopening of the entertainment sector as well as to demonstrate how a large event could be hosted with proper protocols, the government will be organizing a concert on July 1, 2021 at the Port Royal Cruise Terminal. This will be a fitting way to recognize and celebrate International Reggae Day. Meanwhile, indoor theaters and cinemas will also be allowed to open. Theaters and cinemas usually have fixed seating capacity. So you would go by your seating capacity and take 70% of that. Of course, there are est other established protocols about allowing households to sit together, spacing between persons. Now, Vashan, the Prime Minister also announced adjustments to the curfew hours. When do these adjustments take effect? That's correct, Janela. The Prime Minister said starting next month, there will be changes to the curfew hours. Effective July 1, 2021, the curfew will begin at 11 p.m. on Monday to Saturday and 6 p.m. on Sunday 
and end at 5 a.m. the next morning until August 11, 2021. So, Madam Speaker, the curfew hours have been, have been reduced. We are moving from 9 to 11, Monday to Saturday. And on Sundays, we move from, what is it now, 2 to 6. Now, funeral services will be allowed with a maximum of 30 persons present inside the church or the place of worship or funeral home. This maximum limit of 30 persons includes mourners as well as clergy and support personnel. Changes too for churches. The maximum number of persons physically present, allowed to be present, will be determined as 70% of the capacity which is calculated based on one person for every 40 square feet of the designated worship area. Now, the quarantine period for fully vaccinated people will remain at eight days. However, fully vaccinated people will have the option of taking an approved PCR test. And if the results come back negative, they can be released from the quarantine order. Now, for clarity, the measures involving theaters, cinemas and churches will take effect on June 24 and all other measures become effective on July 1. Janelle, it's back to you.